joining us now, Heritage Foundation, Stephen Moore. Uh, and, and I'll tell you, Stephen, I was like, wow, we have Stephen Moore on. Suddenly it's, wow, we have Stephen Moore on. I mean, are there good, there, there's good things that come, uh, you know what? I think when you run for president, it's the same kind of thing, even if you don't have a rat's chance, <laughs> a, 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 right? I mean, a, a, an ice cube's chance in hell. Like, wow, Gillenbrand, you saw, you saw Senator, or I don't even know how to say her name. Would, would, would we even know who she is if she? I mean, it works for them, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, let me let me. First, is any they spell your name right with all this publicity you just <laughs> went through? That's the most important thing. Let me first say thanks to CNBC of all the coverage of what went on there in this debacle. Uh, you know, you were the fairest, and and I gave me a chance it's to a talk bar. about what I wanted to talk about, which is the economy and the Fed and prices and so on. And uh, my friend uh, Steve Fleisman, who you know we were talking in the in the green room. Uh, Steve, I just want to challenge you on one thing that you said, uh, on the which, <laughs> which okay. is you said that the growth has to moderate for the Fed to lower interest rates. And this is my whole this was what my whole campaign was about, that growth does not cause inflation and that, you know, reducing growth doesn't somehow require the Fed to. Look, growth, Steve, pushes out the supply side, reduces prices, and I'm, I'm hoping yeah. actually that, you know, the Fed does reduce rates. We can call that Moore's Revenge if that happens, because remember, I was the one who called out, and many people did, but right. my main thing was the December rate hike, hike was unnecessary. They still have not reversed that rate hike, and they ought to. Do, do we know for sure about tariffs? I mean, I, I saw again that people said that import-export data helped the GDP. It didn't hurt the GDP. So if you had a, and I can't even believe we're talking about QE, but if you had a rate cut and QE, um, even if we had these tariffs, I, I th that's why I think the Fed needs to raise because, uh, you know, they, they, you know, I just don't see how, okay. how you could actually. So here's another thing. Here's where I, I disagree with the president. You can't reverse bad trade policy or bad fiscal policy or tax policy by, by changing interest rates. I mean, the, Fed, the Fed's responsibility is to keep the dollar stable and to keep prices stable. So, you know, the, we can have an argument about whether, you know, what the impact of this trade war is going to be, but I just, I just don't think that the Fed is going to be able to isn't that why counteract that, that But isn't that why rates are cutting rates? Isn't that why the, it, traders think we, we'll get a cut? Because the economy is going to slow because right, of so the tariffs. One of three things was the shock to the system that would, could right. come from so trade. That's, that's one of the things. Why if else you would that out? And you know the market kind of. It's interesting the way the market reacted this week, Joe. There wasn't. No, there was no, a no, shock, no. and then there was a kind of an unshock. Right. But Germany is, is negative again. I mean, why should we be even at two and a half if Germany's look negative? Well, if you look at the the Fed's target, you know they've been targeting two percent inflation for the la at least the last four months. They've been below that target. Um, I just think there's a, 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 a threat of deflation in the economy, not inflation. That's Steve, I'll tell you when you'll be right, in my okay. opinion, yeah. is when, and, 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 and the disagreement we have, you have, is not with me. I'm reporting what no, I think. No, I get it. Fed, I get it. I'm you know how that works, the right? Whole I think the, the Fed Street, has this mentality you know? <laughs> about yeah. the relationship of growth, and I have some yeah. sympathy for what you and Larry talked about. The, right supply additions to resources which, and which disinflationary. Yeah. So here's how I think you can be right, which is if you have a run of higher productivity and that productivity looks to be linked or is linked by the Fed to lower inflation, then I think the Fed can say, you know what, we're a little tight, let's come down. But you have to keep in mind the quote I gave you from Brainerd. They want to hold on to their conventional monetary policy space so that they can react if I they have, I, and I well, I'm just if I've been you. on the Fed, I would challenge that whole idea. I mean, this was the problem I had with the rate increase in December. It's a mentality. They're, they're, here was their logic. We have to raise rates now and cause a recession so we can cut them later to combat the very recession we caused. I mean, I, I just don't think that, that the, the responsibility of the Fed should be to tweak interest rates one way or the other to somehow juice the economy. I just think that's wrong-headed. We want stable prices. You put stable prices on top of the tax cuts, the deregulation, the pro-American energy policy. Now, look, the right. trade stuff is, is bearish for the economy. No question about it. We've got to get so this. You don't want trade. the rates to, to juice the economy, but that's what they would ultimately do. No, 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 no. I want, I, the reason I want a rate cut right. is because I'm worried about falling prices. Not, I think they're below where prices should be, not because I want to juice the economy. That's the key difference here. I want to keep prices stable over time. I want that dollar that you're holding right. in your pocket to be worth 
you know, five years ago, pretty much what it's worth today. That's why we have a currency, right? The purpose of a currency is to retain its value over time. We're, ha we're having a, 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 a <laughs> populist discussion <laughs> about what the Fed would call the neutral rate. Right. What's the right rate, run rate for the economy on, on uh, you would, you could argue, Steve, if you got a $20 trillion economy and you're running inflation between one and a half and two percent, you're darn close to your goal. And I, I think what the Fed would have said to you is, mm -hmm. we think we have the capacity here to take that rate hike. And not hurt the economy, and it's sort of borne out to be but, true. But, well, it's borne out December? to be true in December. <laughs> that December rate increase crushed the economy. I mean, my goodness! No, wait, 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 hold on, Steve. Crash. The, 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 the let us, let us, let, let us review the bidding, as we might say in bridge. You had a rate hike in December. Yeah. You had 3.2 percent growth in the first quarter. But that was how only could Steve, the rate wait, hike wait, have up. crushed the that growth? Was, if that you had above trend growth, three, that was only after the Fed reversed course. How so could the market, the economy, possibly have responded? The, the economy instantly responds to these changes in monetary. I don't agree. Supply. I don't. I don't think the economy was nearly as weak as the markets well, the and many market pundits. The stock market fell by two thousand points in two I, weeks I afterwards, don't. and the, the growth rate in the fourth quarter was very weak. Starting with look, we had four percent economic growth in the summer of two thousand eighteen. The Fed got spooked by high growth. They started raising interest rates, so even though there was no inflation, and the growth went, went from four to two and a half to, to I think I forgot the growth rate in the fourth quarter, but it was it was I think less two, than two percent. What was it? Two point two. You know that's a big difference between four and two. So I just you know I hope if I've had any impact, it's to get the Fed to start thinking about you know stable prices. And the growth does not cause inflation. That's why it kind of went off a so little bit. And I know you were not talking about You were saying, here's the market perception right. on this. But you I want a, a single mandate well. instead of, we have a triple mandate. We got price stability, full employment, and the stock market going What up. a beautiful picture. Yeah. Why did the Fed so have to So you want price stability, that? yeah. Now, look, the trade war, I want to say, I want to give Steve some credit yesterday. You made a really great point yesterday. You, you and I don't always agree. But I think you're exactly right. A, a tariff is a tax, right? A tariff is just a tax. And shouldn't tariffs be go through Congress you know Congress has been kind it's of not the president's fault pardon it's not the president's fault Congress is Congress the one that's has seated delegated it, seated its revenue the power well, Steve, then, then, then you, uh, can you explain to me if it's a tax hike um, then why don't Democrats like tariffs? They love all tax hikes. <laughs> well, that's good. Why, why and, and no, if you think about it, you that. use tax hikes yeah. to hopefully affect something positive in yeah. society, whether it's right. expanded yeah. entitlements or paying down debt or something. Yeah. What we're doing with this tax hike is trying to bring China look, into, gonna, into the world order. So they love tax. Yeah, I don't know why they don't look, like this. I, I can't speak for Democrats. I'll, I'll talk for you know conservative free market Republicans like myself. I don't like tariffs. I hate tariffs. But in this instance, where we are in a, we hear a lot of I think, epic from struggle with China, right. this might be the right time to do this. And I, I, by the way, I'm going to I'm going to say. My bet is that within four months, you are going to get a deal with China, and I really right. believe that these tariffs will be uh, will be. It, it's just whether it's a half and measure. If that from, happens, yeah. you're going to see the biggest boom. And and it be, why do I think that? Because it's in the interest of both countries to get this result. You're going to see the biggest boom because of what? Because you, the understand. one thing that's holding back the economy right now this is. is the fear. This, Big gray cloud of this right. this trade war with the two biggest economies in the world. Well, well, if we, you solve that, right. I just think you know it's it, you know what I've told the president by the way is look get this thing resolved now get the best deal you can. Best China. deal you can. Then you get a second term and right. you can use your second uh, term I, to. Best I don't China. disagree. Won't be a great deal. By the way, though, right? I'm, won't be a great deal. No, they're, they're not going to change. Won't be a great deal. They got too much. Ride, they got too much riding on the way it's done now. It's, a, it's you know I talked to our trade negotiators. This is. It is so difficult to get China pinned down on anything. One day they see they'll do one thing, the next day they do the next. It's you know there's I don't incredible disagree that this is creating a cloud over things and that things would boom or likely be better if, if we get rid of this thing or, or at least get over this and get to an agreement. But the quite the larger question I have is functionally you think manufacturers coming back to America is a function of this? Do you think that we're going to start? Uh, I mean, to me, that, that's the larger. All, all of this manufacturing is just moving to Vietnam. Isn't that what's happening? Well, look, here? I mean, that's a, those are global trends that are happening, you know, irrespective it, of, of, this, of this tariff war. But I think, you know, look, there's not, one of the points I've made is 
there's nothing that Donald Trump is asking of the Chinese that's unreasonable, right? I mean, everything he's asking for them to do, yes, they should stop stealing our intellectual property. Right. Yes, they should open up their markets. Yes, they should reduce their tariffs. Ultimately, I had a good discussion with my pal Larry Kudlow the other day. We want to get tariffs actually down. The end result of this trade war, if it works out, could be actually lower tariffs okay, on so both sides. Okay, four possibilities. Yeah. More tariffs on China, the same existing tariff regime on China, China rolling back to the 10 percent tariffs we had before mm -hmm. and rolling those back to of those four <laughs> probabilities yeah. that's a what, good question. what what do you think is the most likely outcome a year from now i think that, that the most likely outcome is at least we go back to 10 percent and maybe zero so you we know, go back to, he rolls maybe. back that level. It depends. So, Steve, the reason I'm hesitating is right. it depends on what China's willing to do. Right. But and, what's and interesting the about The worst that. outcome, by the way, the worst possible outcome for the United States of America and the future of our economy would, for, would be for Trump to just cave in. No, we cannot cave in here. We have to stand firm against China. I mean, this is the epic battle of our time. It might not be and, next year or the year after, but five, ten years from now, we'll wish we exactly. had stayed firm. You're exactly here. right. You know, we, we, we are in a that. position of strength right now. One thing about Donald Trump. He, he understands the concept of leverage. And he understands, you know, we can't trade with be, China, we sneeze, hey, see, they catch pneumonia. It'd be nice to let the rest of the world and the scientists and engineers develop all this stuff and then just sort of bring it into your own, you know, let your own companies have it. I mean, it, it, there have been people that have said if, if, if China really did have to develop everything themselves, that, that Germany would outcompete them. South Korea could outcompete them. Japan could outcompete. We definitely could probably out people, but it's not a fair playing field. Right? The intellectual property theft is a gigantic problem. I don't know how you solve that problem in a trade deal, frankly. I mean, the Chinese are still even, they're still even um, saying that they're not stealing. You know, right. <laughs> how can you solve a problem when they won't even uh, acknowledge like it? By the way, yeah. they have a problem in China. They're, the companies steal their own, you know, within the country they have a problem with intellectual property and theft. the Chinese I mean, had the, to had to incorporate environmental degradation that goes on in their country. Well, there's another great point. Some economists estimate there may have been no growth in China. Yeah. If you count the lives lost and the yep. degradation to their, the environment. Their increase in emissions and pollution levels last yeah. year, just their increase was more than the entire and, and, and amount you, of pollution you, from the entire you're country about of Canada. So you're exactly right you're about that. You're talking about particulate pollution, like sulfur dioxide. Yeah, yeah it's not, it's not a greenhouse pollution, gas thing. It's not, the real thing. Yeah, not greenhouse so we're going we're to win, and, and we're going to have a greener planet Water, as a result. Chemical, right. chemical waste, nuclear, all that stuff. All right. We had Stephen, the Stephen. So you just walk around here, and people go, Stephen, what, Stephen? I mean, it, it's big now, right? You get tables, any table you want at any restaurant <laughs> right. now, right? Well, I'm either famous or infamous, depending right. on how you talk to. Of course, you get the nice table, and then all the New Yorkers come up to you and go, yeah, Stephen Moore, we don't like you. I don't know, right, Andrew? I, I'll just, no. just say one last yeah. thing. I love women. I love women. I just don't like women's basketball, okay? Okay. Guilty, there, 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 wow. You, there you know, you it, it's not that different than, than what these guys in the NBA do. All they do is run down and shoot three-pointers. That's all they do. They're dunking the now. Yeah. Right. <laughs>